at Nair Mansion when these three, the Archbishop Rowu, the late Oboso Fumbi, and the late Nair Yama were tried in a kangaroo court with the attendant paraphernalia and condemned. I was a young foreign service officer and we'd been asked to come to that mansion. You could see from the way those in power were talking that the murder was inevitable. Anybody saying it was an accident is wrong. The, om the mens rea was ominous. And I must satisfy that the three were aware of what was going to befall them that day. I could see the letter Nayo Oriema and Obelso Fumbi resigned to their fate. It was only Archbishop Rumum, whose countenance displayed acceptance, hope, and fortitude. The late Archbishop Rumum had chosen to speak for the downtrodden. He'd chosen to bear the cross for the voiceless. And he was aware of the potential consequences and he accepted it. Fortunately for me, at that time, we were already engaged in fighting Ida Min. I was already a member of NASA, and the death of Archbishop Rumum, rather than discouraging us, stilled our resolve to fight for justice. and for the liberation of our country. I saw it all. And that's what gives me presentiment when I see leaders engaged in reckless behavior. When I see leaders uttering words that divide us rather than unite us. This commonwealth called Uganda was created not by our forebears but in Berlin. We had no choice to be Ugandans. But at independence, we accepted this commonwealth and we became Uganda. And our differences is our strength. That's how empires survive. There is nobody called a Roman. Romans were Germans. Italians, Spanish, Spanish, English, Egyptians, Jews, 
All of those who belong to the Roman Empire. In their diversity, they created a mighty empire. In our diversity, we should struggle to create a strong, united, and prosperous Uganda. No tribe or ethnicity makes greater contribution to the welfare of Uganda than the other tribes. We are all equal. No religion is got a monopoly of virtue and vice. Let's all come to God the way we are. Since God accepts us, let's use our religious differences to give glory to God and create prosperity for Uganda. Let's put Uganda first. Only then, only then, can we proudly walk up and say we are Ugandans. Let's emphasize what unites us. Let's emphasize what's primary and disregard was secondary. Those faiths, those traditions, those beliefs that be divide us should be discarded. Let's emphasize what uplifts our welfare. Let's emphasize what puts us together and puts us on the march of progress. Culturally, we the Banyankore never used to eat fish. I, I doubt whether it was culture or because there was nowhere to catch it from. There are no lakes in Ankore. Even if we wanted it, <laughs> where, where would we get it from? Now, when I grew up, I realized that was a, back, a backward practice. And I eat fish. And you can say I'm not small. <laughs> that, I eat fish, I eat chicken, I eat mutton, <laughs> I eat eggs. Those are things we don't want to eat. That belief and practice was not moving our society forward. I appeal to every Ugandan to discard that which holds us backward, what is anachronistic, and promote and cross fertilize those virtues and practices that promote development and growth. Let's accept each other as we are. There is a song by Church of Uganda where they say, God, I pray to you, take me as I am. And that's what I always tell God. On the rare occasions when I go to church. <laughs> I tell him, you know, God, I am here. I'm your creation. When the time comes, just take me as I am. Just take me as I am and uh, everything will be okay. Your grace... When I witnessed the drama of what happened on this day, I am sorry, 
I started questioning the wisdom of telling us that leaders are anointed by God. I asked God, surely God, good as you are, are you the one who anointed a I mean or so? Couldn't you have done better for Uganda? Countrymen, much as God anoints leaders, you also have a role to play. You have your vote. Be careful. Be very careful. Exercise your right to vote diligently, cautiously, aware of where you are going. Forget this excitement. No excitement. You have only one life. You don't have another chance. Every single that day that goes by is a day gone and gone forever. And when they tell you happy, happy new year, that's a step towards the grave. You don't have another chance. So don't squander your vote for choosing a leader who will lead you to progress. We deserve better. We don't have to follow sweet nothings. You want to lead. It's not you have a handsome face or a beautiful dress. It's what are you going to do for us? Unat perekawapi. When you get another idamin, don't blame me. You have voted that idamin into power. Just because you are excited. This... Uh, <laughs> Lady Hira Rode comes here promising you heaven and earth as if he has never been to heaven when he has never been. <laughs> and then you sing and put a finger and say, Hira Rode, Savior. <laughs> the next day the man turns into a monster. You've created him, you can't remove him. So be careful. We've walked a long path. I'm sure we've faltered along the way. Faltering is not the problem. The problem is inability to learn from your mistakes. The inability to learn from your mistakes is the problem. But making mistakes is, is human. It's only a stationary car that doesn't raise dust. But when you've raised dust and you've noticed it, do you inherit it? No. Not at all. I am scared by we Ugandan celebrating the death of Janan Wum and not questioning whether it was worth it for him to die. Why? Why did he have to die? Why did he die and we went on with it, I mean, as if nothing had happened? Once beaten, twice shy. Learn to stand up and speak. Learn to stand up and speak. D don't quarrel. There is a difference between d freedom of expression and rioting. Th this is the problem I have with some of my, my friends in the opposition. 
They say they're exercising with the right to speak, but then they, they bring stones. They... So I say, freedom of expression is legitimate and legal, but royalty is illegitimate and a crime. So choose. I encourage Ugandans to speak. Nobody should gag you. I encourage Ugandans to speak, to exercise your right of freedom of expression, freedom of association. I, I, I didn't acknowledge my friend, the president of the UPC. I'm sorry, Jimmy. We are friends. Now, I found him at Pamozi Hotel in Zambia. He was very young, but he was sharp. I was head of the Secret Service of Uganda. And I asked him, I said, but Jimmy, the way you are talking, you could be very useful in Uganda. And he said, sorry, I, I, I can't come because I'm opposed to you. I told him, I will tell you, that, but we are working with people who are shooting at us yesterday. For you, you wrote down as a literal, as to raise a stone at a passing military vehicle. We are working with people who are shooting at us, you. Then he told me he was on both his son. I said, look at him. I'm also my father's son. <laughs> Where is it written? In the laws of Uganda, the laws of the church, and the, and, and the laws of God, that a both his son cannot come to Uganda. I am very glad that Jimmy Akena has come back and is contributing to the rebuilding of this country and is my friend, faithful and just. That's the way we should live on earth. Our life on earth is just, like I've always said, is just an infinitesimal pause in eternity. Uganda was there without you, it's here with you, it will be here long after you are gone. Just make your contribution. Don't try it on Uganda. Just make your contribution. That's, that's what we ask of you. To be a good Ugandan. And to be a good Ugandan, you must embrace every Ugandan, everybody who ascribes to Uganda. Whether he's from Soro, or Uraba, or Karamajong, if he's not coming to wrestle our, our cows. In fact, I was telling somebody, we should put these Angkori cows between Achori and, and Karamoja because they don't walk. <laughs> we should just get all these cows and put them there. When they come to steal them, we shall catch them because they, they, those cows don't walk. You can't, you can't chase them. My Lord, I'm glad you are here. I have known the Chief Justice from the time he was in CA. I commend him to you, the people of Achori. He is a nice man. And I'm not very fond of compliments. I'm not very fond of compliments. But Justice Owinidoro is a nice man. And I call him a friend. I call him a friend because I saw in him capacity to speak for the downtrodden. My ideological identity is struggle. Struggle for the oppressed. My mantra is voice for the voiceless. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. May I take this opportunity to ask the, His Grace the Chief, the, the Archbishop, to come and address us. But I thought the Archbishop was going to, to give us a vote of thanks. <laughs> Thank you. A round of applause to the Minister of Internal Affairs.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. May I invite the area bishop who will turn and invite his grace. And thereafter, his grace will invite the chief guest. And we will then sing anthems in the reverse order. Each one stanza. And thereafter, we